traveling your eyes with me from the Wild West to the home of Ron Sweeney, where some suspicious happenings are afoot. In this five-minute mystery, the bookcase. Mr. Bowling. Oh, now, Mrs. Bland, and the way you say that makes one think that... <gasps> what? What was that? Sounded like a truck backfiring out of the room. Oh, no, Mr. Ronald. It was in this house. You, you mean a gunshot? Uh, Mrs. Bland, come on. Mrs. Bland, turn on the lights. Bolding! Bolding, old man! Bolding! He's been struck on the head! Mr. Ronald, look! Oh, someone hit me from behind. Mr. Ronald, your father, in the library. Mr. Ronald, quick! Oh, oh, Mrs. Bland. Your father, fallen forward on his desk. Mr. Ronald, is he? Yes, he's dead. Mrs. Bland, call the police. This is murder. Murder! <laughs> Tell the inspector whatever he wants to know, Bolding. We've got to find out who murdered my father. Yes, sir. Well, I was locking the front door when I first heard the voices from the library. I was surprised because I didn't know Mr. Sweeting had a visitor. But just as I approached the library door... Uh, go on, Mr. Bowling. Well, sir, I heard the shot. For a moment I was confused and opened the door and Mr. Sweeting was lying forward over his desk, a, a bullet wound in his temple. I saw a piece of paper caught in his hand, sir, and then... A tingling sensation of fear flashed up my spine. I knew I wasn't alone, sir. I didn't see anyone, but I realized the murderer was there and flashed through my mind that he, he was waiting till he could get hold of that piece of paper. Did you take it bolding? I did, sir. That is, I slipped it into a book that was on the desk. But there's no book here on the desk. Oh, he must have taken it, after all. I, I even remember the title of the book, sir. It was. The Widow's Walk. And I slipped that paper in between pages 77 and 78. But just as I did, yes, the murderer darted out the door behind me. I whirled and ran after him. But the next thing I knew, something struck me over the head. No, Bolding, you're wrong. Hold out your hands. I arrest you for the murder of your employer, Mr. Sweeting. you know Bowling killed my father, Inspector? He didn't say anything, as far as I can see, that would have... Uh... Yes, he did, Mrs. Bland. 
Striking himself on the head was almost enough to make the whole thing plausible, but he said one thing that told me he was lying. You see, it's impossible to insert anything between the pages of 77 and 78 in a book because odd-numbered pages are always on the right and even ones are on the left. So 77 and 78 are actually the same sheet. It can't be done. I'm sure that you all figured that out <laughs> before the inspector gave it away. So, and now that the case is solved, we can just sit back and relax and find out what's new in the world of Goodman Ace and his wife, Jamie. Easy Aces is brought to you by the makers of Madison Headache Pills. Now, many of you, I'm sure, have had Madison recommended to you for the quick relief of pain from a headache, neuralgia, or neuritis. Perhaps a friend has suggested that you try it. You may wonder why Madison is so recommended in preference to other ways. Well, the reason is that Madison acts to relieve your pain effectively and remarkably fast. It's like a doctor's prescription. That is, it's a combination of medically proven active ingredients. And everyone knows that when your doctor makes, you, uh, makes out a prescription, it usually contains not just one ingredient, but several. Thousands of people have been given an envelope containing Madison tablets at some time or other, or other by their dentist or their physician. They know how fast it brings relief for them. If you have not yet tried Madison headache pills, go to your drugstore now and pick up a box. Try Madison the next time that you're in pain from neuritis, neuralgia, or a, just a plain old headache. Try it on the proposition that if the first few tablets do not give com complete satisfaction, you may return the unused portions, and your money will be instantly refunded. Ask for Madison, spelled M-A-N-I-C-I-N. M-A-N-I-C-I-N. <laughs> in tins of 12 and 30 tablets, and in bottles of 50 and 100 tablets. but Jane insisted she had to go to a psychiatrist. After a week of visits and with a little rest and care, I'm happy to announce that the psychiatrist will be out in a few months. <laughs> Psychoanalysis, you know, was developed by Freud late in the 19th century, but it never got popular until it was taken over by Fox in the 20th century. <laughs> Jane's interest in the couch started the other day when she met my boss's wife, Mrs. Norris, on the street, and they had a chat about psychoanalysis. And went something like this. Well, Mrs. Ace, good morning. Oh, hello, Mrs. Norris. Long face, no see. Yes. Uh, where are you going, my dear? Just fine. Well, how have you been? Just up to the corner to match this material for a dress. Oh, that's good. I hardly recognized you, Mrs. Norris. It's that sweater you're wearing, I guess. Oh, my sweater. Do you like it? You look stunned. My dear, I've never worn a sweater before I started going to my psychoanalysis. Psychoanalyst. He told me my subconscious mind kept me from wearing it, and he made me get rid of my inhibitions. He did a good job on me. I can tell you that. Oh, yes, he certainly fitted it well. Yes, his name is Dr. Montel. Dr. who? Montel, M-O-N-T-E-L. He adjusts all your mental <laughs> conflicts. He's done wonders for me, my dear. Every night I offer up thanks for Freud. For who? Freud, F-R-E-U-D. He's the man who founded psychoanalysis. Oh, what Dr. Montel could do for you, my dear. 
Oh, he would help you get rid of all of your inhibitions. He'll tell you everything that's on your mind. Well, all I have on my mind now is this material I want to get matched for a dress. Oh, no, I mean on your subconscious mind. Things you don't even know are there yourself. For instance, look at me and Jonathan. He's as devoted a husband as you'll find anywhere. And still, in spite of all his devotion, it has left me, shall I say, mm, apathetic. All right. Last week, for instance, he said to me, Margaret, he said, you're certainly looking well. It was then I realized I had to go see a psychoanalyst because my subconscious mind said to me, yes, he thinks you look well now, but how long will he think you look well? That's when I went to see Dr. Montel and what he's done for me. He told me what makes me tick. My dear, you simply must go to him at once. Well, first, I have to get this material matched for a dress. Oh, I don't mean this minute. You'll have to make an appointment. He's so busy and so handsome. You can see what he's done for my mental conflicts. Yes, you're so cheerful and so ravenous looking in that sweater. Maybe I will go. <laughs> Tell him I sent you. Do you remember the name? Oh, sure, Mrs. Norris. No, no, I mean the doctor's <laughs> name. Dr. Montel. Oh, yes, F-R-E-U-D. <laughs> After dinner that evening, I noticed there was something on Jane's, if you'll pardon the four-letter word, mind. And after dinner, she sat there staring into space. So I sat there staring into space. We stared into each other's space. And finally, she said, Dear, how do I look to you? Vapid. Yes. But how long will I look that way? Well, according to the insurance statistics, your life expectancy is about... No, you're getting off the subject. Do I look good to you? That's what I want to know. Now, come on, I want your candied opinion. My candied opinion is that you look very sweet. Wonderful. Oh, my. I've got it, too. Uh, I beg your pardon? Uh, what have you got? Mental conflicts. M-E-N-T-A-L. Is, isn't that awful? What are you talking about? I'm going to a psychoanalyst first thing in the morning. To a psychoanalyst? Jane, you amaze me. Not now, dear. Let me tell you why I decided to go to him. This morning, I ran into Mrs. Norris. Hard, I trust. And she told me she's been going to him, and you should see what he's done for her. She's wearing a sweater. She went to a psychiatrist so she could wear it. Well, she got it rid of all her exhibitions. But not in the sweater, she did. <laughs> well, just now, when you said to me how wonderful I look, it left me, shall I say, apathetic. Apathetic? A P A. -T -T. Well, will you stop spelling at me? I'm no apathetic, and you're not going to a psychoanalyst. He doesn't give you medicine, you know. No, I know, I know. I tell him what's on my mind, and he tells me what's on my mind. Jane, he wouldn't have a target. <laughs> Don't you understand, dear? When you told me just now that I look wonderful, and I felt, shall I say, apathetic, that means something. It means you look wonderful. Yes, but how long will you think I look wonderful? How long? See? Even you're beginning to wonder. <laughs> no, I'm not. Jane, we have no money to throw away on foolishness like that. They're expensive. Yes, but look at what he does for you. He told Mrs. Norris all about herself, told her what makes her think. And she is. Jane, if you go to this guy, you'll wind up in a straitjacket. Well, if he fits it for me as well as he did her sweater. <laughs> he will. He will. <laughs> So, the next morning, Jane got up bright and early and went to see the psychoanalyst. Oh, correction. The next morning, Jane got up early and went to see the psychoanalyst. The doctor was ready for her with pencil and couch. And you say Mrs. Norris sent you to see me? Yes, she did, Dr. Montel. Mrs. Norris? Oh, yes. She had a deep-seated neurosis. Why will people permit neurosis to become so deep-seated if they would come early? Hmm. Well, you said 11.30, Dr. Montel. <laughs> Mistress Ace, for your first visit, I'll take your case history. 
Are you comfortable on that couch? Oh, this is fine, thank you. I like your office. Everything Mrs. Norris told me about you is certainly true, Dr. Montell. She said you were handsome. Really? Well, I... And may I return the compliment and say I think you're handsome, too. Well, now, so much for the doctor. Let's get to the patient. Tell me about yourself, Mrs. Ace. Well, I wouldn't say I'm handsome exactly, but my husband <laughs> thinks I'm well enough to look at. Let's not discuss your husband for our first visit. Let's stick to you. Tell me how do you feel generally, I mean. Well, physically, if you'll pardon the expression, I feel fine. But it's the mental conflicts that get me. What mental conflicts? Like when my husband said last night that I look wonderful, my unconscious said, how long will I look that way? Aha! Aha! Something on the order of Mrs. Norris's anxiety neurosis. Well, I see I'll have to prescribe for you the same as I did for her. Yes, I guess so. Except that I want a much smaller size than she does. What? 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 Uh, Mrs. Ace, tell me how long have you had these thoughts when someone complains to you about their appearance? Since I saw Mrs. Norris yesterday. Oh, then I'm sure yours is a mild case. And I can cure you in this one visit. But if I'm always going to say how long to myself? You won't always say that. I'm sure you won't. Mrs. Ace, I think you are a very charming woman. Well, thank you, Dr. Montel. I guess it's this new blouse I'm wearing. There, you see. You accepted my flattery without a single thought to the contrary, passing through your mind. Yes, sir, I did. You're cured, Mrs. Ace. It was a simple case. You don't need psychoanalyzing, but I'm glad you came here when you did. Most people wait until it's too late. Well, I'm glad I got here at the psychopathic moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and there are too many more important cases in these troubled times. What did you say when you got here at what moment? The psychopathic moment. Psychopathic? Yes. Well, goodbye, doctor. How much do I owe you? No, no, just a moment. Lie back, please. What happened? Say that again. You got here when? Say it again. Dr. Montel, you're scaring me. You're getting my bearings balled up. <laughs> getting your what? Doctor, let me up. You're making a mountain out of Muhammad. A, a mountain out of Muhammad? Is something wrong? Why, back, Mrs. Ace. You're a most interesting case. I am, huh? I had a tuition there was going to be trouble in the offering. <laughs> tuition? Hmm. Offering? Yes, most interesting, Mrs. Ace. There is some force at work on your mind which telegraphs twisted and hastily visualized words to your tongue. What is that force? That's what I want to find out in the interest of research. Would you come to me for a hour every day and tell me the story of your life from as far back as you can remember? Just one hour every day, will you come? Sure, if you think I have to. Yes, yes, very interesting case. We'll have our first hour now. Lie back, Mrs. Ace, and tell me the story of your life from as far back as you can remember. Well, let me see. I'll start with my five years in high school. <laughs> I believe that's four years, Mr. Zace. Not me, doctor. That night, I refused to listen to anything Jane had to say about her visit to the psychoanalyst. 
But Jane found an interested audience in her mother, who is now living on us, uh, 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 with us. I ought to tell you a, a little about Jane's poor mother. She's in the last stages of a big appetite. She's been to every doctor in New York, including one veterinarian in Flushing. That was the day she said she was sick as a dog. <laughs> And she takes dozens of different medicines. There's one medicine she takes every hour on the hour. It's Cuddy uh, Sark, some Indian remedy, something like that. So when Jane mentioned having gone to a doctor, her mother looked up quickly and said, So, the doctor says you've got psychoanalysis. It sounds exciting, Janie. <laughs> Did he give you a prescription? No, Mother. He's not like the doctors who give you medicine and take x-rays and put you in an oxidol tent. What kind of doctor is that? He's a psychoanalyst. He cures the mental conflicts and he makes you happy. Well, if it makes you happy to be happy, be happy personally. Any doctor who won't give you medicine is a fraud. That's right. F-R-E-U-D. <laughs> he tells me what's on my mind. He can see right into my brain. Dear, now you stop that. Uh, I didn't say anything. Well, I don't like your altitude about this whole thing. Stay out of this. I don't like you spending money on psychoanalysis. Money? After all, what is money for if not to spend on doctors? I always say it's better to be well for one day than sick for two weeks. No. I'm not sick, Mother. Look, here's the whole thing in a nut house. Well, just tell me about the doctor, Janie. He sounds very interesting. A good question, Mother. And the answer is, he certainly is. And the handsomest you ever saw, with an office to match, Tall, dark brown hair. I've always wanted a tall office with dark brown hair. <laughs> and when he smiles, oh boy. No tea. Dear, what did I tell you? Uh, you said stay out of it. Well, do it. Where was I? The doctor, Janie. Does he have a regular doctor's office? Oh, sure, like every doctor's office. Young nurse, old magazines. And you have to lie back on this couch he has there and talk to him. There's a table on either side of the couch. On the one table, cigars. On the other, cigarettes. He says to me, lie down and collapse. So I did. And he said, I want you to tell me the story of your life from as far back as you can remember. You can smoke if you want to, he said. So I took a cigar and I started to talk. Took a cigar? It's in my bag. I'll give it to you oh, later. Oh, for me. <laughs> You see, I'm always thinking of you. And you sit there making sarcastic remarks. So what did you talk to him about? Did you tell him where it hurts you? Oh, no, Mother. I told him about what I did when I was in high school. It wasn't very interesting. He yawned a couple of times, but I can take a hint. So tomorrow when I go, I'm going to make up a story to tell him. Make up a story? Well, I'm certainly not going to sit there boring him for a full hour every day. So tomorrow, I'm going to make up a story out of whole wheat. He said it's a good thing I went to him as early as I did. Most people wait until it's too late. Like Mrs. Norris, for instance. Do you want me to become deep-seated like Mrs. Norris? No, Jane, that I don't. <laughs> neuralgia or just a plain old headache? Well, if you have, I hope you turn quickly to Manison for relief. Manison is one of those wonderful drugs that brings quick relief for those who suffer from the nagging pain from neuritis, neuralgia, or a headache. Perhaps a friend has recommended it to you. Maybe your doctor or your dentist has prescribed it for you. Those who have used it have found fast relief for whatever, whatever pain ails them. Ask them about it. And they'll probably say, well, it may not be a miracle drug, but it sure comes close. You'll find the same results when you use medicine. 
That's medicine spelled M A N I C I N. M A N I C I N. And you'll find it in tens of 12 and 30 tablets, and bottles of 50 and 100 tablets. Try it the next time that something ails you. You'll get quick relief. And now, and now back to Easy Aces. Well, this is Friday. The, Jane, the day Jane hurried down to the psychoanalyst's office to continue telling him the story of her life. Only she noticed he yawned through most of the story she told him yesterday. So today, she has made up a lot of exciting things that didn't happen to hold his interest. This is the day which will set back psychoanalysis 25 years. <laughs> One which became known in medical circles as Black Freud Day. <laughs> That's it, Mr. Zace. Just slide back and relax. And we'll take up where we left off yesterday. I hope we can do as well today as we did during our session yesterday. Oh, this is going to be a thriller deller, Dr. Montel. <laughs> yes, let's take it from after your high school graduation. Yes, well, sir, doctor, oh, you're gonna like this. It was the summer I graduated, the heat was on, and we were driving home from a party Sally Anderson and I and two fellows. The fellow she was with later left town. The fellow I was with later became Mr. Ace, my husband. You see, Sally and I always double dated. We've been insufferable friends for years. Insufferable? Aha! Uh -huh. Oh yes, always together like a couple of Simonized twins. <laughs> Simonized, yes, go on. Yes, sir. Well, we were in the car, and one of the boys was driving, the one in front. <laughs> I was in front with him. Sally was in the back with the other one. We were singing and laughing, shine on, harvest moon. You know how the school kids are, full face and fancy free. Full face, aha! Yes, you know, just out for a good time, not wild or anything like that. Or would you prefer wild? What's that? No, I guess you wouldn't. Well, we were driving along when alongside our car came another car. And in that car was another boy I used to go with. And he was jealous that I was with Mr. Ace, who later became my husband. So I leaned over to Sally in the front seat and I said, isn't that wrong? Just a moment, Mrs. Ace. You said before you were in the front seat. Did I? Well, she leaned over to me in the front seat, and I said, isn't that Roy? Is that better? Yes, I believe it is better. <laughs> and Sally said, yes, I believe it is. Well, Roy was so mad I was out with Mr. Ace, who later became my husband, that he wasn't watching where he was driving, and he almost bumped into us. He looked kind of wild, almost besmirk, you might say. Aha! Uh -huh. Aha! Uh -huh. So, Mr. Ace, the one who later became my husband, started to drive faster to get away from him, and pretty soon we were both going so fast. Well, I'll tell you how fast we were going. We were 12 miles from town, and would you believe it? We made it in eight miles. You, <laughs> you made it in eight miles? miles if I'm a day. And then, to clap the climax, we suddenly heard the whistle of a train coming around the hill. Oh, I forgot to tell you, there was a hill around the bend, and we had to cross the tracks. But there we were, going like bats out of a belfry. Belfry? Yes, yes. And we were so fast, we couldn't stop. And the train was going even faster. We couldn't hear the train whistle. Woo! And we were going, oh, oh, and we all knew that if something didn't happen, this was the end. Well, goodbye, doctor. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait a minute. What happened? My hour is up, doctor. To be continued tomorrow.
Well, the story Jane made up out of whole wheat turned out to be a cereal. <laughs> While Dr. Montell was hurrying over to see his psychoanalyst, Jane rushed home to tell her mother and me what had happened on her second visit to the good doctor's office. Well, sir, dear, he didn't yawn today. I told him a story about being in a car with you, who later became Mr. Ace, my husband, and a train was coming around the hill, and it looked like it was going to hit the car, and then I stopped. Well, you could have knocked him over with a fender. You, you mean to say you told him the story up to that point and walked out? Well, I haven't figured up the finish yet. Isn't that awful? But, Jamie, I don't understand. Didn't the doctor even examine you for bruises you might have gotten in the accident with a train? <laughs> oh, no, Mother, you don't understand. He isn't that kind of a doctor. He's a doctor for mental conflicts. Mental conflicts? I, I, I never had those, Janie. I, is it anything like dizzy spells? Oh, no. Mental conflicts. It's for people who worry. Worry? Who doesn't worry? Except my sister, your Aunt Wilma. She used to worry all the time. And then one day, she decided to stop worrying. And overnight, her hair turned brown. <laughs> Mother, maybe you had better come with me to see Dr. Montel. Uh, I lost track here, Jane. You're not going back there tomorrow? Oh, I have to go back. I have to figure out a finish for that story and tell it to him. Wait a minute, I can't go tomorrow. I took some material to the dressmaker the other day. I have to go for a fitting. Dear? What? You'll have to go in my place. You want me to go be psychoanalyzed in your place? Unless you want to go in my place to the dressmaker for a fitting. No, yes, I will go, Jane. I want to visit that doctor. Maybe I can help him. His office was just as Jane had described it, tall, dark, brown, and I was greeted by a nurse in a short leather seat at a desk. Good morning. May I help you? I want to see Dr. Montel. Do you have an appointment? Yes, 11 o'clock. What's the name? Mrs. Ace. Oh, yes, I have it right here in my book. Mrs. Ace? Yes, Jane Ace. Oh, to be sure. Well, well, the doctor will see you in a minute. Oh, you have a chair, Mrs. Ace. No, no, you don't understand. You see, oh, well. Yes, thank you. I'll sit right here. No, 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 not here. Over there against the wall. And that's it, Mrs. Ace. And just, just relax. The doctor will be with you in a moment. Don't get excited and don't be nervous. Everything's going to be all right. I'm not excited. <laughs> I'm not nervous. That's right. Just relax. The doctor will buzz when he's ready for you. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you're looking well, Mrs. Ace. It's just this makeup. Okay. Well, no, thank you. I just had breakfast. <laughs> uh, the doctor will see you in just a moment, Mrs. Ace. Would you like to look at this magazine? Well, yes, I don't mind. No, no, don't get up. I'll slide it over to you across the floor. Oh, thank you. Oh, the Ladies' Home Journal. Yes. Yes. <laughs> There's a lovely new dress designs in this month's issue. Oh, that reminds me. I wonder how I'm making out with that dress and having fitted over at the dressmaker. <laughs> You're having a fitting at the dressmaker later on, Mrs. Ace? No, I'm over there being fitted now. <laughs> the doctor will see you in just a moment, Mrs. Ace. Thank you. Yes, I have to go to the dressmaker for everything. I simply can't find my size in ready maids, even hose. I have to have a maid special. Me too, Mrs. Ace. And the nylons they sell you these days, this morning I put on a brand new pair of nylons. And no sooner did I get here, when I got to run all the way up to here. Oh, really? Uh, up to where? Look, Mrs. Ace, all the way up to... Oh, the doctor will see you right now, Mrs. Ace. Oh, now he sees me. Go this right is, in. This, <laughs> this is psychoanalysis? Oh, thank you. It's been nice almost seeing you. And remember me to Mr. Ace. Well, I'm happy to... Who are you? I'm Mr. Ace. Mr. Ace? Oh, 
Oh, you're the one who later became Mr. Ace. What goes on here? Yes, I'm Mr. Ace. She couldn't make it today. Oh, no. No, no, no. I was hoping she would come. I've been on pins and cushions since left here. I've been going besmirk. Besmirk? I've been trying to write a paper on her history, but my bearings are all balled up. Oh, brother. <laughs> Even my wife can't understand what's wrong with me, and we've been insufferable companions for years. Murder. Murder. I have always been so full-faced and fancy-free. Uh, look, Jane, uh, uh, doctor, I don't want my wife coming here anymore. Will you please tell... Uh, not come here anymore? She built the story up, the psychiatric moment, and then she walked out. She's got to tell me what happened. You were in the car, you can tell me. You were speeding along in that car. The train was coming around the hill. Whoa, whoa! You couldn't stop, the train couldn't stop. What happened? We were killed. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Ace. Thank goodness you took a load off my... You were killed. Look, doctor. Interesting case. Lie down, Mr. Ace. Me? Very interesting. Now, I want you to tell me the story of your life from as far back as you can remember. Well, I was born in a Wild West show at the age of three. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. That doctor will never forget that hour if he lives to be 12 years old. I fixed his wagon because the very next day in his office. That's right. Just lie back comfortably and relax now. I want you to continue the story from where we left off. Well, Doc, well, after, after I got out of the Wild West show, the I decided to become an Indian. My husband, dear... Please, you're pushing me off the couch. Well, move over, Jane. I gotta have some room. Move up a little. The palms of your feet are hanging over the end of the couch. <laughs> I can't move over. You push over a little. Well, I can't. There's no room. Well, somebody's gotta move. All right, children. If somebody has to move, I'll move. <laughs> <laughs> by the makers of Madison Headache Pills. The remarkable tablets that give effective and fast relief from pain due to headache, neuralgia, or neuritis. Madison is like a doctor's prescription, that is. It's a combination of medically proven and highly regarded ingredients, not just one. And you know a doctor's prescription usually contains more than one ingredient. That's why your dentist or your physician at some time or another may have given you an envelope containing Madison tablets. So the next time, that you're in pain from a headache, neuralgia, or neuritis, remember Madison. That's M-A-N-I-C-I-N. M-A-N-I-C-I-N. M-O-U-S-E. <laughs> it comes in tens of 12 and 30 and bottles of 50 and 100 tablets, and it's at any drugstore. Back on stage, the cast of Alexander Radio Theater.
Alexander Radio Theater is brought to you by Alexander Community Theater, the Alexander County Library, and Apple City Broadcasting. This is Bud Mays, your announcer, inviting you to tune in next month for another Alexander Radio Theater production. Take your time as you head back to the present day. Enjoy the view, and don't miss the little things of today that will be tomorrow's treasures. Radio.